Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this week in Intercom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD, specifically that the Dell CTO has said that he doesn't believe there's going to be an Intel and AMD duopoly, and has called AMD the second player in the CPU market, at least for x86 processors. We'll get to that in a minute. Then we'll focus on NVIDIA, because there are a couple of reports going around with the GTX 2000 series. One, the, the pricing for these new cards is going to be over $1,000 US dollars for the flagship models. And the second is that the GTX 20 series, or the 2000 series, whatever you want to call it, is actually being delayed by NVIDIA, with board partners actually having expected the specifications by now, uh, so they could start to produce their bill of materials and begin development and testing, but that has been delayed. But we'll get into that in just a minute. First things first, the Dell CTO. A couple of you actually sent me this, one via email, so thanks very much to Joe, and thanks very much to Thomas via Facebook, who were the first people to send it to me. Anyway, um, this is according to Dell's CTO, in a discussion with Channel, uh, Channel Pro, CTO John Roche has said, and I quote, Make no mistake about it, Intel is a big player, AMD is the second player. There's enough diversity between them that there are use cases to have them both in our portfolio, but just the sheer breadth of Intel processor portfolio is massive compared to even the accelerated AMD world. AMD is doing some very interesting things, and by adding them to the portfolio, we pick up a few extra areas, but let's just be clear. There is a huge dominant player in compute semiconductors, and then there is a challenger who is doing some good innovative work called AMD. But the gap between them is quite large in terms of market share and use cases. So, our portfolio is not going to change in any meaningful way. Don't expect it to be a duopoly any time soon, End quote. And I'll put the Channel Pro article, of course, in the link in the video description. While those comments might seem kind of harsh, they do have some merit. But I will say that, according to Lisa Su herself, who is, of course, AMD's CEO, AMD are doing pretty damn well. And it's not just her comments. It's not just bluster on her part. If you were to take a look at the sales figures for AMD over the past, let's say, four or five quarters, it's without question that the company are doing very well, and it's thanks to, of course, one thing. Can you guess what it is? That's right, Ryzen. Back in Q3 of 2016, AMD held a whopping 9.1% of the desktop unit share. We're not, of course, referring to laptops and other things and servers, where it's probably even more bleak, to be honest. Then, in Q4 2016, uh, it went to 9.9%. AMD were making some major price cuts. But now we're at 12%, which might not sound like a huge thing, but once again, AMD have told us that it's tripled its sales during key times during the year, especially during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Currently, AMD are also benefiting, if you consider this a benefit, I mean, technically it is in terms of sales, but not so much in actual pricing, I guess, and that is that they've cut the price considerably. For example, back in early January, we saw the price cuts of the 1800X from 500 US dollars down to 350 US dollars. I'm somewhat rounding up here. The 1700X, 399 to 309. Uh, the 1700, 329 to 299. We see, let's say, the 1600, which is a very good value processor indeed, 219 down to 189. And even things such as the Threadripper uh, lineup also received the price cut as well. Now, I don't want to bore you with pricing details, but there have been some other price cuts that have also popped up recently as well. And in fact, quite a lot of vendors, I won't name all of them, but the usual big vendors have also started to cut prices. Why? Because, of course, they're waiting for the next generation Ryzen's, the Ryzen Pluses that we've discussed at them ad nauseum on the channel before, and of course the website as well. But they are, of course, a 12nm refresh of the current uh, Ryzen CPU, so we're going to expect marginal clock speed increases once again about 5 or 10%, as in accordance to the leaks and the benchmarks that we've seen time and time again. 
So it's looking fairly positive for AMD in the future. But, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be a situation where let's, let's, let's be crazy. I mean, let's be unrealistically crazy right now. This is not what I think the performance of these processes are going to be. Just to be clear, I'm just giving an example of craziness. But let's assume that these processors have a major clock speed increase, way beyond what we're expecting. Let's say that they're 15% faster. I highly doubt it, but let's just say they were. And let's also say that things such as the cache has been improved, the latencies have been discussed, maybe there's a few tweaks here or there. So maybe if you would compare the, let's say the 2600X versus the 1600X, you would see, say a 20% improvement in clock, uh, sorry, performance, maybe a 25%. I don't think they would be. I'm not saying they will be. I highly doubt we're going to see anything like that. But just for the sake of this video and this argument, let's assume they were. Without a question, AMD would pick up a lot of sales. But in the grand scheme of things, in terms of the market, it would take a lot of generations of processors. It would also take the next generation of Ryzen processors and the generation after that and the generation after that to really punt it to Intel. But... That isn't to say that all hope's lost. What it does do is it filters down to the rest of the market, and that's the comments that Dell aren't really um, hitting here. Because, of course, this also means servers. This also means things such as, you know, low-powered laptops. This means two-in-ones. And, of course, even consoles. So, for AMD, they're still going to be lucrative. And for some folks, they just want Intel. It's fine. If that's what you want to buy, that's down to you. Some folks, all they want to buy is Nike. Some folks, all they want to buy is Apple. Some folks, all they want to buy is an LG smartphone. Whatever, that's down to them. The point is, though, that if you only want to buy an LG smartphone, at least there's a good competitor in Samsung. At least there's a great competitor in HTC or whomever. And I guess that's kind of where we're going with this. Intel might have an overwhelming number of processors, an overwhelming amount of market share, but AMD are definitely fighting back. And it's a great time to now pick up a processor from any company because AMD have kicked Intel in the butt a few times and now Intel are finally being awoken. But with that said, let's move over to the next piece of news. So the GTX 2000 series has been a bit of a saga. I'm going to give you the synopsis before we get into the story. I guess you could say the story so far. Cue ominous music. So of course, about two years is what we've had the GTX 10 series or the 1000 series or Pascal or the current GPU that's available from NVIDIA, whatever you want to call it. And as I've said umpteen and one times, if you happen to be one of those folks who bought a GTX 1080 or a 1070 or what have you on launch, by golly gosh, you're probably bloody happy. Not only have you had a GPU which has remained pretty much at the top of the pile, I mean, obviously you've got the tie and whatever else, but still, but you've also probably actually ended up ironically paying less than what it's available now. It's a weird time in the GPU market with, of course, mining. Typically, you expect prices to go down, or at the very least stay the same, not so much now. So to get us up to speed with the current rumours, Volta is going to not appear for customers. We've established this fairly well by now. Instead, we've been hearing Ampere and we've been hearing Turing. We'll get to that in a second. The rumours were originally we'd see a release date in March, oh, sorry, in April, excuse me. So we'd see the cards available in April. However, there was some clarification from other sites, including Tweaktown, and they've said that that's not the case. Instead, what we were going to see is the cards unveiled then, and then they would be available for sale a couple of months later. So essentially, by let's say the first half of the year finishing and closing out, and the second half beginning, we would see the new cards available or at least be tantalizing close to sale by golly gosh that was actually succinct to me but there's a couple of new rumors which have popped up i'm going to get to the bad one to the probably i'm going to make you want to cry one so we'll go to the bad one first so this one circles back to the fact that prices for cards have become rather ridiculous We've discussed why this is umpteen and one times, but of course it comes down to things such as mining, it comes down to shortages of graphics, um, 
card parts, specifically the actual memory, and to a degree as well, I'll be honest, price gouging. And this has really hit AMD's cards, but it's also unfortunately affected NVIDIA as well. So let's focus once again on the 1080. I don't want to bring the TIEs or the TIs or the Titans or anything else, and let's just keep it nice and simple. Kiss, if you will. And that is that the 1080 sold uh, for US dollar prices at 699 Now you can start seeing those cards way more than that. Absolutely ridiculous. Particularly when you see cryptocurrencies become more valuable. Obviously, that's when everyone jumps on the train. So some rumors on Tweaktown, plus a lot of other websites are saying that this makes sense, and honestly, it might do. And that is that currently we see the TI, the GTX 1080 Ti hitting way over $1,200. In fact, in some instances, it's actually more expensive than that. Amazon actually have it fairly cheap. We see some of the 1080s hitting way over $800, uh, $900 for the actual cheaper versions. For a very brief comparison, I actually got my 1080 just when crypt, uh, cryptocurrencies were pretty much dying out. I, I bought my card and I bought it for a song. I bought it like, like $150, $200 bucks off. And then suddenly it's like, oh, cryptocurrencies. And then I just kind of waved goodbye to the idea of getting SLI because I refused to pay that amount of cash for a second card. So once again, the 1080 was for sale at $700 back in May 2016. Some models, and at some times you could get some discounts, so it went down to about $650, $600, dollars, depending upon the direction of the wind. But now those cards are way more expensive. You're looking at like 800 to to 1000 bucks, And this is where it becomes a bit tricky. Because I highly doubt we're going to see the MSRP for the 2080 to be like $700. Or even if it is, those cards are going to be so hard to get hold of, we could see prices go absolutely ballistic. And this really is where we see its segmentation. Because... But it's likely we're going to see the GTX 2080 use GDDR6. It's very possible it's 5X, but it's unlikely because it's faster than GDDR5X, that is GDDR6, and it's not that much more expensive. And this is possibly why NVIDIA, in a couple of comments, have said that, yeah, they don't think that graphics card prices are going to be going down until maybe the third quarter. So possibly that's why they're waiting for increased volume of these additional memory technologies and other parts to actually start filtering out into customers. And the second question, and this is in a second going to circle back to the next piece of news, which is going to probably make you cry, it depends also on how NVIDIA decide to segment this, because we're hearing Ampere and we're hearing Turing, one rumor is that one is going to be aimed at the cryptocurrency market, another one is going to be aimed at us gamers. But fast forward to today, and a report from Igor over at Tom's Hardware. Now, this one is a very interesting report to me for a couple of reasons, because it actually essentially backs up some of the earlier rumors, but it also says that NVIDIA have changed their minds, but they're not. But we don't know quite why yet. So basically, anyone who expected GTC or uh, GDC to be the debut of the GTX 2080 series, it's not going to happen. Instead, what we might see is a basically some kind of very brief announcement, maybe kind of a, a teaser, pretty much you know something is coming, and that's about it. And this is where things start to become very weird. So it looks like, according to these rumors, that... Dun, 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 Ampere is actually not going to be for gaming, which was the rumours just a couple of days ago. Yes, this is getting ridiculously hard to start to uh, figure out now. Ampere instead is going to be the successor to Volta. Meanwhile, Turing is going to be the card for gaming, which kind of weird given Turing is, well, you know, Alan Turing, crypto... You know where I'm going with this. I, I'll just drop it there. But still, the point being that it's kind of weird. And according to Tom's Hardware, board partners were expecting to receive Turing specifications. They were expecting to start receiving 
essentially what they needed to build the the GPUs, the bill of materials, which would be, hey, you need this, you know, these VRMs and this HDMI and, you know, this amount of cooling because the card's going to operate at this level of wattage and you need this number of PCIe connectors and, you know, you also need to sacrifice the firstborn child, perhaps, whatever it is. Those are the type of things that they were starting to expect by now, and perhaps some rough understanding of maybe even some prototype GPUs, whatever. But that did not happen. And so they won't be receiving that until May. And why is this? Well, unfortunately, we don't know that part. According to these, and once again, Tom's hardware sources, I don't know if this is accurate, we won't see the cards even start mass production until June, and therefore, it's going to be a hard launch in July, perhaps even August. So there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is, yes, it's slower than what we had anticipated, but it's not like NVIDIA are delaying it until 12 months into the future. Why is all of this? Well, it's kind of hard to predict, but it's possible there's a couple of reasons. One is the same reason that I just mentioned a moment ago about the MSRP prices. Essentially, NVIDIA just don't want to launch and get the bad publicity of needing, of being forced to launch at a card which is going to cost them like, oh, sorry, cost customers a thousand bucks. It's possible because they know they're just going to get blasted. Like, could you imagine the bad publicity? Now, you can argue that NVIDIA doesn't care and let's say for the sake of this video that the GTX 2080 is twice as fast as the 1080. I'm not saying it will be. I don't know how fast it's going to be. But just for this public, just for this video, let's say it was. It's still very hard to argue that, especially if you compare the GTX 1080 versus the 980 and the pricing and performance of it. It's a, it's a lot to ask. The second reason is, do they really need to? I know I've said this before, but AMD are not pressing them on any of the specific areas they need to. I discussed this yesterday with AMD actually being up in discrete GPUs, but in reality, it's not for good reasons. It's just simply because of mining. I'm not saying that mining isn't, you know, a valid reason to buy a GPU. To me, you could buy a GPU because you want to just take a steamroller to it. It's totally up to you. You buy the equipment, your money, your dime, your time, you do with what you want. But it's not because of gaming. And that's really from what the rumours are, with Turing anyway, assuming it's once again accurate, that's really why NVIDIA are not in a rush. So my personal opinion is that it's likely a combination of different things. One, NVIDIA are probably still tweaking it. Maybe there's been a fault in perhaps the, you know, maybe there was a fault in one of the, in the design, perhaps they had to roll back a little bit. Perhaps they're still doing internal testing. Maybe they're starting to tweak things. Maybe they've made a decision that, hey, we need it actually in this financial quarter to prop up this. Or maybe they are once again concerned about the pricing. Or, and then once again, my personal opinion, it's possible that it's just that they don't feel pressure to do it at the moment. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.